All right, somebody let me know about this in the comments of one of my videos here on YouTube. I'll probably be posting this on my website um, through Rumble, but uh, uh, just a very interesting thing here, this little lying devil Bruce, you know, Mahia, uh, part of the new IFB cult, one of Stephen Anderson's little cult followers. Um, they've staged a little media event there that uh, supposedly his church got blown up or whatever else or had a bomb go off inside of it. There's so many problems with this story. You'll see that the glaring inconsistencies, it's a staged event. That's all it is. <laughs> Just ridiculous. Watch. Watch this. We're going to throw a few of these little news things here, and then I'll show you he's all excited about the media attention that he's getting. We'll watch it. The FBI and police in the Los Angeles area are investigating an explosion at a church. The First Works Baptist Church has... Okay. Explosion at a church. They're investigating an explosion. Listen. ...been the target of protests for its anti-LGBTQ message. Officers in El Monte say that they responded about 4.30, thinking someone had broken into the church building. Then they noticed smoke coming from inside. Some windows had blown out during that explosion. Officers are now looking into whether this was a hate crime. Okay. It just, they, they responded because they saw, you know, windows broken out. And I thought they responded because it was an explosion. Kind of weird. No one was hurt. No one was hurt. Okay. Um, now, here, look at this. Okay. Now, I'm no explosives expert or anything, but... If you look at this, I think this is rather interesting. There's glass in a in a straight column. There's no glass here, in this area here, and there's no glass back where this guy is standing. It's just glass in a straight column going across where the crossing lane is. Okay? Watch this. Watch while they walk across to where this cult building was. Okay, so apparently this bomb that got thrown in somehow blew out the glass just from this window and it went straight across the crossing lane on the road. No glass over here, no glass down there, just straight across. There's enough glass to go the whole way across the road like that. It's kind of odd, isn't it? Come on here. Why well, this is giving me some trouble here. Let's go back to the beginning. Let me reload the page. A developing story in the San Gabriel Valley. A church in El Monte was left damaged this morning after an explosion and a vandalism attack. Now a bomb squad is at the scene amid a possible threat of a second blast. KCAL 9's Joy Bennett. They always say that. So, well, that way with the Oklahoma City bombing. It's just a possibility of a second blast. <laughs> How could that happen if it was just somebody walking up, smashing a window, and throwing a bomb inside? How could there be a second device there, a second bomb? It is live on Tyler Avenue near Elliott with the latest. Is that where you're at this morning, Joy? We are about a block or so away from that location, Serene, as we have been moved a little bit further away um, when we arrived. I guess they felt that we were too close. But as you see this... Um, they're too close? I thought it was a random smashing a window and throwing a bomb inside. <laughs> was there a second device? Oh, goodness. Scene behind us, you got to scoot back about a block or so, and over there on the corner, that is where the church is. You can see some blue tents that they have now put up in front of it, and a little bit of graffiti there at the front of the building. You also see um, the bomb squad, the sheriff's department, and we're told the FBI is here as well, as everyone's trying to figure out exactly what happened. But take a look at this video as all of this happened at about 1 o'clock this morning. That's when investigators got the call first of some smoke being seen in the area. There were I thought the other report said 4.30, 1 o'clock. Okay. There are some El Monte police officers here um, very, very quickly. And when they arrived, what they saw was not only the vandalism, but possibly some signs that there may have been an explosion. At that point, that's... They saw some signs that there possibly may have been. <laughs> well, she's sure of herself. Possibly may have been an explosion. Wouldn't there have been this 
you know, people saying, hey, we heard an explosion. You'll see part of that later on here. You know, shouldn't that be kind of signs enough? When the sheriff's department, the arson unit came in, the L.A. County Fire Department, as they were trying to figure out what happened, and they did determine that it was, in fact, some sort of an explosive device that went off in and around this church. And then, of course, there was their concern of possibly yet another device as they're trying to figure out exactly. <laughs> kind of love the dramatic thing there. You know, possibly yet another device, you know. Like some kind of preaching thing or something, I guess, there. But, you know, and again, how does another device get in? It's a random act. What caused this blast? When our units uh, arrived to the scene, they found that, uh, I believe it's the First Works Baptist Church, uh, was having some smoke come out of the windows. It appeared that the uh, walls to the church had been vandalized, as well as all the windows it appeared at first to be smashed. And then we had realized that uh, the windows were not smashed, that they had actually uh, blown out from some type of explosion. Okay, for all of the windows to blow out, it would have to be a, a fairly sizable explosion. Okay. Um, again, the story is just not making any sense. And how did they get the bomb in there in the first place? We'll see another report. They say that they think that they broke a window and threw the thing in or something. And there's possibly a secondary device. How? Now back out here live, this is First Works Baptist Church. It's also been called Faithful Word Baptist Church in the past. It is controversial to say the least. It has been a target of protests in the past, as some say their words and beliefs are hateful to the LGBTQ community. Out here, it's not clear if that's part of the investigation, but you can bet that it will be, as there has been been several protests out here in one as recently as maybe a week or so ago. But again, it's not clear if that is a factor in this explosion or what exactly happened. All of that does remain in, under investigation here this morning, and you can bet we'll have some more information later on in the show. I'll send it back to you, Serene. I'll... Yeah, you can bet we'll have more information later on. Yeah, I'm sure. Here we go. Uh -huh. Another one here coming up. Homemade bomb was tossed into an El Monte church. No. A homemade bomb was tossed into an El Monte church. Okay. Uh, the windows weren't broken in. They were blown out. How'd you get the bomb in there? <laughs> for its anti-LGBTQ teachings, and now the FBI and local investigators are trying to figure out who is responsible. Sometimes things happen and can happen anywhere. Angel Payan's machinery shops just across the street from the First Works Baptist Church site of this morning's explosion. Doors look like they're closed or maybe that little iron gate there is kind of open. I mean, it wouldn't have been anybody from the church that would have tried to do this as a stage thing to try to get the media attention or anything. You know, never, never. Vulgar graffiti is now sprawled across the walls. He won't be doing business today. Somebody just decided it was, they wanted to do something about his... Payon says the church pastor, Bruce Mejia, has been the target of protests recently over his perceived teachings against the LGBTQ community. <laughs> Perceived teachings against the LGBTQ community? He calls for their death openly. I did a video on it. Perceived teachings. I mean, what kind of media coverage is this? You know? Everything that I do is within these within these doors. Okay. Uh, again, all the people out there, oh, Pastor Mejia, he's strong. He's he's standing for the truth, and he's, he's, he won't back down. He's wearing a face mask. You know? Wearing a face mask for a fake pandemic. You know, Anderson did the same thing, closed his church down to, you know, for the COVID thing and then reopened it to make masks, face masks. I haven't worn a face mask yet. A lot of other brethren aren't either. We're fighting against it. We're saying this is nonsense. This whole thing's a scam. But he, he's standing firm and everything. <laughs> yeah. To my congregation, I preach it on YouTube. And if someone doesn't like what I'm preaching, they can just turn it off. Pastor Mejia. If something one doesn't like what I'm preaching, they can just turn it off. Why hasn't YouTube turned this guy off? <laughs> He's violated their community guidelines. Why haven't they shut him off? Why won't they shut him down? Same thing with Andersnake. You know, he got shut down at
basically because his, his boys were going to be in you know trouble of, of criminal charges and things because of things that they were saying to underage girls. They had to quick flee the scene. It says the bombing is clearly a hate crime. We've been here for three years and not once have we ever incited violence towards anybody. There's never been a crime attached to my preaching. Right now, there is no indication the bombing is linked to protesters or a recent online arson threat. The group that organized the protest, Keep a Monte Friendly, issued a statement ahead of a pride march tomorrow, saying that march is now canceled out of a, quote, abundance of caution. As for the pastor, he says the violence won't stop him from preaching what he believes. I'm more fearful of disobeying God and preaching his word than any individual in this world. I'm, I'm willing to lose everything to preach God's word. No one was injured in the explosion. The FBI has now joined in that investigation. I'm, really, I'm willing to lose. No, hold on here. Listen to what he says. I love this. Disobeying God and preaching his word than any individual in this Word more about, the, you know, disobeying God. Uh, well, why don't you look up back there in Leviticus, you know, where it talks about a man covering his face because of leprosy and he doesn't cover his nose. Uh, what does the Bible say to cover your face because of a flu-like uh, thing that's not even really been proven? Coward. What a bunch of stinking fake nonsense. Let me go do, do this. Well, someone quick. set off an improvised explosive device at an El Monte church this morning. The an improvised explosive device, an <laughs> IED. Okay, uh, where's the proof? The FBI now handling this investigation. CBS 2's Joy Benedict shows us the damage it did, and she talked to neighbors who heard it. It's a scene that lingered all day in this El Monte community after a night that was hard to believe. I heard a loud boom. It sounded like a firework, but way louder. Hell, it sounded like I'm, I'm former military, so it sounded like artillery. The F <laughs> Okay, an IED that sounds like artillery. Really loud and can blow... The glass out of a window straight across the walking lane going across the street, the whole way across. Just a perfect, you know. Yeah, but the, the authorities showed up and oh, it looks like it might have been the windows broken in or what's going on. FBI is calling it an IED, an improvised explosive device, a phrase rarely heard to describe violence in this community. The idea that something like that would happen in this neighborhood is beyond, you know, comprehension. But investigators say someone targeted this church. Almani police officers responded just after 1 a.m. It was filled with graffiti and um, just obscene things that they wrote on the walls. And the windows were blown out. They had thrown a bomb in there. Bruce Mejia is the pastor at First Works Baptist Church. He says their security cameras captured two people walking up before the attack. Okay. Their security cameras captured two people walking up before the attack. Okay. Remember that. Their security cameras captured two people walking up before the attack. They have security cameras. They caught the two people or caught two people walking up before the attack. People may not like your message, but people need to understand that if you don't like it, then go somewhere else. If you don't like it, just turn off my sermon. <laughs> First Works Baptist Church has been the target of demonstrations recently by a group called Keep El Monte Friendly, after organizers say sermons posted on the church's YouTube page preach hate. Now welcome here, folks. On several occasions, the pastor uses offensive slurs towards the LGBTQ community and says he doesn't care that some want him to stop. We're going to sign all these petitions and get all these signatures to try to get the mayor to come to you and throw you out. Then what? You think I'm going to stop preaching after that? But when you use certain words and say you're not welcome here, I mean, you have to understand how that can upset people. Yeah, and you know what? Everyone has the right to be upset, but no one has the right to come and bomb a building because they're upset. The Almani Police Department says they have had several calls in the past to this church because of demonstrations, but none of them have been violent. We can't really say what the motive was for this attack. I don't want to say those groups in any way were responsible for this. No one was injured in the explosion, and investigators are searching the area for security video, but no Investigators are searching the area for security video. Didn't he just say back in here that uh, 
we have two security cameras right back in here they just said listen here we'll find it again here church he says their security cameras captured two people walking up before the attack their security cameras captured two people walking up before the attack okay <laughs> No one was injured in the explosion, and investigators are searching the area for security video, but neighbors have had enough. <laughs> okay. You see? They're just making this thing up as they go. It's ridiculous. You don't like what someone else protests is about. You don't like somebody's religion. That's your choice. That's your belief. But you don't have the right to put somebody's life in jeopardy. For those who live around here, hope and arrest will not only bring justice, but peace. Joy Benedict, CBS 2 News. Brother. But now watch, he can barely contain himself here in this little uh, fake sermon here. You are in Matthew chapter number six. He goes into this. We'll zip ahead here to three minutes. Battery right in here. Now watch. Watch what he says, okay? Remember that Stephen Anderson founded the, the new IFB with his little stage managed event is the thing of him going with the border patrol and they beat him up and they tasered him and everything else and then it was all over the media baptist church your baptist pastor persecuted whatever else and that was steve's claim to fame that's how he got big this little dork right here is trying the same thing listen it's like oh you said you know get ready for war and to bring it on they blew up the building it's exactly what you asked for folks i'm not blown up yeah. <laughs> i mean i'm blowing up on the media right now so <laughs> I'm blowing up like I thought I would. No, I'm just kidding. You know? <laughs> I'm blowing up like I thought I would. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Duping delight. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a thing that he's doing there. He knows what this is all about. He understands that it's it's his chance to to be the, a new star. He's going to be a new star. And it's ironic. Uh, what happened to Stephen Anderson? What was his big claim to fame that happened after his border patrol incident? He was interviewed on the Alex Jones show. Info wars. Oh, I'm going to be interviewed today at 2:15 p.m. Pacific time on Info Wars. <laughs> you idiots can't come up with anything new. It's just so funny. Four minutes and 50 seconds. Let's zip ahead here. Listen, he says can't, can't contain his little glee. Oh, I'm going to be a star. <laughs> <laughs> say that and what do you mean the blessing I thought nothing was gonna happen and all these things folks this is the best thing that could ever happen to our church this is literally the best thing that could ever happen he said why <laughs> this is the best thing that could ever happen to our church <laughs> yeah because nobody it's, has any common sense at all or you know much less saved uh, would even bother listening to you feminine little devil Listen to this, he does it again. Exposure and try to expose us and stuff, but they're actually helping us. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, get them on Fox News and MSNBC and all these things. And then it's just like, cool. It's just like, cool. Really? I've been trying to get on there forever. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get on mainstream media forever. <laughs> Dang, this is hard, you know? And then they, they just do the work for us. Amen. And they're like, are you willing to get in? I'm like, they're interviewing me. And then they always put the best parts of the sermon. Right. Yeah. I'm like, can I hire you guys to make clips for me on my YouTube channel? <laughs> you guys do great. It doesn't affect us at all. Or should I say, it doesn't affect us in a negative way at all. Right. It's always positive. All things work together for good to them to love God. Yeah, that's definitely not about you. And he keeps doing the whole way through the thing. Oh, well, we're being persecuted for righteousness sake. No, you're being persecuted because you're excluding certain people from salvation. The reprobate doctrine, which the new IFB bases, it's one of their core philosophies, is that people that are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, whatever the thing is, they're sodomites, as the Bible calls them. They can't get saved. There's no repentance. They're just done. As soon as you commit it, you're done. You're finished. There's no salvation after that. You know? Even, uh, and the uh, funny thing is that uh, Stephen Anderson's boys were joking about committing sodomite acts with each other, and that just kind of gets swept under the rug, and we, we won't talk about that. Yeah. 
bunch of stinking rotten hypocrites. These guys are devils. That's why I've been exposing them for years and years. And I will continue to expose these devils as long as I have a voice on mine. Continue here. That's right. And I'm reading this, I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. By the way, it's exciting too. Amen. Let's just be honest. This is exciting. Amen. You know, everyone thinks we're like, oh man. I mean, we're just kind of like, man, this is kind of cool. <laughs> you don't want to live a boring life. Amen. Right. We want buildings to blow up. <laughs> we want us to be threatened. We want all that stuff because there's only one life to live. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's only one life to live. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's all fake. These people are doing this whole thing. It's all fake. You know? And we're not afraid. Oh, well, they were afraid in the book of Acts. Christians were persecuted and they lived in fear. They were hiding for fear of the Jews after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and he was buried before he rose, you know, when he, well, he rose from the dead, but they didn't, they didn't know that yet, the, the resurrection yet and things. Jesus hadn't showed himself to them. They're hiding for fear of the Jews. Christians have been persecuted. Christians, when they really get truly persecuted, when it's not a staged event like this, they do hide. They are scared. If it was real, they would be frightened. Just like Christians have always been down through the centuries. I'm not saying that they would stop, you know, preaching or teaching, but it has nothing to do with the gospel. It has everything to do with them being just a stupid hate group. And YouTube protects them. So just wanted to put this video out there. You know, I know where this whole thing is going to go. They're trying to, to resurrect this, this rotting corpse of the new IFB um, after their god Anderson fell apart. Uh, you know, fell from grace and, oh, he's standing against Border Patrol. And the COVID stuff comes out. He, oh, yes, oh, please. Oh, 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 oh. And put on a face mask and everything. Oh, I'll put it on my face mask. Oh, please. Oh, don't persecute me. Same thing as this little sissy right here. You know, and now he's bold and we're going to stand. We've been bombed and everything else. It's a, it's a staged event, the whole thing. It's ridiculous. The media is getting their stories all mixed up and everything else. Um, if you're in this system, I've known so many people, praise Lord, that, that have come out of this new IFB satanic cult. Uh, get out before something bad happens to you. Okay, these guys, these, that whole system is filled with sex perverts. They'll go after your daughter. They'll go after your son, too. Um, if you understand what happened with the Steven Anderson debacle, um, they're wicked. They're very wicked. And it all traces back to the Jack Hiles cult. They had the same thing that they were going through, all the perversion and everything else. Um, these people are lost, okay? They do not preach true biblical salvation, that Jesus Christ died for sinners, and that anybody can get saved. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives, like the old hymn says. You can get saved, okay? It doesn't matter how vile you are. It doesn't matter how wicked you are. Uh, you could be the, the worst sodomite, transvestite, whatever. Jesus Christ can die, or he died on the cross to pay for your sins. His blood can wash away all your sins. These devils do not preach that. So, more uh, media circus here, but uh, don't fall for these lying devils. Thank you for watching.